get on. Alright, so uh, for my project today, I recreated a game called Tennis for Two. It was one of the first video games I've ever developed. It was invented in 1958, which was 16 years before Pong. It's completely unrelated to Pong. Um, so, uh, it was written by a nuclear physicist who designed it for an open house. He just developed it over two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And um, during that open house, it was the, the talk of the show, pretty much. Um, it was like a two hour wait to play this, this game. But one of the interesting things is he did this completely on his own. There was no other games for him to reference. He did it on an analog um, computer, transistors, and relays and things. Um, and the display was an oscilloscope. So that's what I've recreated over here. So the ball resets, and you can use the controller to vault the ball over the net, and you can change the angle of your the trajectory of the ball by changing the angle of the knob. So if you want to hit it more up, go that way. And this is pretty much exactly how his game looked um, over 50 years ago. Um, it was one of those games that was almost lost to time. Um, the reason why a lot of people know about it is um, after Atari after Atari made Pong. Um, someone made basically a Pong clone, and Atari wanted to sue them. So during that lawsuit, someone basically brought up the point, hey, you might not want to try to sue these guys. Someone right. made a game right. 16 years before you that was like this. And so um, uh, that nuclear physicist had to provide all the documents showing that he made the game, etc. So those are all freely available online. Wow. So um, That's someone else basically made this project for a specific microcontroller. Um, and I thought it looked really interesting and I had an Arduino sitting around. Oh, okay. So the architecture huh. between the two microcontrollers were similar. They're basically huh. different models. So. Um, I basically ported it to the Arduino to get it to work. Hmm. Cool. So, so how much more effort was it to actually do it, port it um, to Arduino? Like uh, the code, um, like the, the the core data structures and the flow of the program wasn't hard at all. There was a few obscure calls to like a specific light, a specific function or like mm -hmm. an assembly call that I had to dig back and, and remember mm -hmm. some of my assembly for. Um, but the code wasn't so much the hurdle for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done a fair amount of soldering, but this was the first time I've created something. Mm -hmm. um, so that was probably the biggest thing for me, just um, learning how to configure the resistors and learning how to read electrical diagrams. And cool. Huh. So let's let's uh, take a video of the uh, electronics here too, huh? So basically, the brains of the operation are the Arduino right here. Um, then there's eight green wires and eight red wires. Ah, okay. And this is a resistor ladder. What that basically is is um, each one of these wires is the same as a bit if you're counting in binary. Oh, okay. So that's how I'm able to draw onto the screen. Cool. By toggling each one of those wires on and off in configuration, ah, you can okay. output um, basically anywhere from zero to. Um, you can use WA. Uh, 127. 127, okay. And um, cool. that yeah, corresponds with the uh, dots on the screen. Huh. So the idea um, is that it's a, you're just kind of dropping so the there's your, you your ball there. Here, so you kind of, huh. You left handed? Now, did the original game creator envision this to be two player or one player? Two or player. Or two player? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's how he demoed it, huh? Yeah, and this, I mean, his, his big claim to fame is he developed some. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what it is. Um, some huge advancement in the field of like nuclear physics and oh, okay. some giant theorem and whatnot. Oh, okay. But he's still remembered for, for the his game. game he made nice. Him, you know, so, what, what, what did he call the game? Tennis? Or? Uh, tennis for two. Tennis for two. Yep. All right, cool. Well, what's, uh, what's the next project you're going to take? Uh, um, after this experience, I'm taking a break from hardware. <laughs> okay. Hardware usually isn't my my forte. I mean, I, okay. I do a little bit here and there, but nice. um, it's such a different world from software. Yeah. Where in software, you know, you write something, mm -hmm. and if the code's right, it works. Yeah. You might wire something up and right. find out that the potentiometer has a rough spot here, yeah. where the values aren't quite skewed to how they're supposed to be. So, okay. with hardware, there's a lot of extra stuff you got to compensate for. Right. So, huh. um, it was it was a 
you know, big learning experience though too. Cool. So, well, thank you so much for coming to the Cleveland Mini Maker Fair and uh, hope to have you next year too. All right, thank you. Thanks.